for me from uh, South Africa. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, dear Ganadi, thank you for your invitation. And um, as, as my uh, title of my talk suggests, I'll be talking about some unified approach, which uh, uh, as you can see, Lindblad is a part of uh, approach which is familiar to you. And non emission is somehow, uh, for some reason, I didn't uh, see much of the non emission dynamics during the, this conference. So, I guess uh, I would feel that I want to learn quantum open systems. Let me switch off my camera. I think I'm in. Okay, um, all right, so term uh, open quantum system usually refers to some uh, quantum system which is uh, uh, surrounded and interacting with background. And obviously if we're talking about standard quantum mechanic quantum field theory, they of course they try to incorporate the background into the picture. So to make the whole uh, system plus environment to be unitary evolving. Unfortunately, in many cases, it's not possible because environment can be very complex. Therefore, uh, we need to do have different models of environment and, uh, and here comes the quantum mechanics of open systems. Now, obviously, there are different models of them. One could uh, select out the most, uh, most popular ones, such as boson bath models, less known quantum chaotic models, random matrix models, et cetera. Uh, they have all of this uh, environment models that have a problem. So such as analytical complexity, obviously many body systems. Uh, if you do numerical computations, then uh, in most cases, your time computations would be proportional to exponent to the of uh, N when for N body systems. Uh, number three is the problem is the lack of generality because uh, you always, you have to postulate the environment from the beginning and uh, the, your results, so there is no guarantee that it would be general or, or anyhow universal. And uh, number four, sometimes actually, especially for practical applications, you need to, you doesn't need to full measure of, of uh, environment and body uh, environment systems, um, but we need to um, introduce some sort of decay or dissipation into a model, then see how it uh, behaves uh, compared to experimental data then you tweak your uh, your terms, and then you probably give a better idea about your environment, which is but which is uh, um, which is pertinent to your particular system you're working about. So it actually could be useful if you try to reproduce, restore from the model to reconstruct the original nature of your environment, as well as subsystem, of course. Therefore, uh, the popular uh, the re reduced models are very popular where and effects of environment can be encoded in the correction terms in the Hamiltonian or evolution equations for the reduced density operator, such as example would be Lindblad master equations to be considered later. Uh, common features of this reduced approach is that your total Hilbert space is a product of uh, Hilbert space for your subsystems and your environment. And then you introduce the average, the, uh, average of the density operator over environment degrees of freedom and that's where you arrive uh, to the uh, reduced density operator for, for brevity, I will are gonna be dropped the subscript S. Uh, as for your uh, total Hamiltonian, that obviously splits into two parts and you are, since you are interested in your subsystem Hamiltonian, this is the one you will be uh, most interested in to get analytical or any other form of it. Okay, so uh, first example is the Lindblad approach uh, where Actually, it's, uh, it turns out that dissipative effects are primarily encoded not in the Hamiltonian, but in the some additional term in the evolution equation for the reduced density operator. And one could play with uh, some uh, mathematics, uh, standard textbook exercise. So Lindblad approach, you separate your subsystem from the background, then you pose Markov and Born approximations. 
then you impose uh, our uh, rotating wave approximation also called as circular, plus do some auxiliary, auxiliary simplification. And that way you, al you arrive at the master equations, which looks like a uh, quantum phenomenon equation with the uh, commutator part, plus uh, dissipator part, which is um, in a, a quantum dynamical semigroup form, has this form where capital A's are called Lindblad operators. So, uh, in, so this is believe when you, whenever you have a background or in what environment, then it, it will contribute, well, it will definitely contribute partially into your Hamiltonian, but most of the contribution will come through the dissipator uh, uh, term, which is uh, traceless. All right, so can the Lindblad term account for kind of dissipative phenomena? And question number two, can this term account for all Markovian kinds of background? Uh, unfortunately, the answer to both questions is no. And um, if you can see from this uh, picture, so you see that Lindblad approach is basically a subset of uh, secular approaches and subset of Markovian and Born approximations. So it's only upon assuming all this chain of approximations, you eventually can say that your system is described in Lindblad. Uh, it can be described by a Lindblad uh, master equation. Uh, all right, so uh, there is a, on the other hand, there is a totally different approach, which was, which became probably popular since the classical work by Feshbach in 1959, who in nuclear physics, which uh, related non-Hermitian Hamiltonians to open quantum systems. Well, non-Hermitian Hamiltonian is a Hamiltonian which has both self-adjoint and skew-adjoint parts. So, uh, and Feshbach found that in principle, if you take uh, almost well, quite general uh, system, and, and if you decompose into the bipartite time, then uh, after some algebra, so you have uh, your uh, subsystem like a shell model plus interacting with all kind of uh, all kind of um, uh, scatterings, and then uh, scattering stable environment, and uh, your system is described by some discrete uh, states. So eventually your subsystem will acquire additional term, which is uh, not only non-local, but also complex. So in also energy dependent. So which means that actually you have to develop some uh, very new formalism to deal with uh, such uh, systems. And uh, let me explain you why. Uh, Let's try to start with density operator formalism. So we walk a little bit by analogy with uh, with the uh, uh, with the Lindblad approach, uh, right? So uh, we say that our Hamiltonian is acquires a, a skew adjoint part, which can be written as a, some uh, Hermitian operator times imaginary unit. You can write down, of course, by now, like we're showing a picture evolution equation for the state vector. Uh, but you see, the problem is if you try to apply uh, a Schrodinger equation directly to this system then you have a lot of contradiction because on the left part, you have a clearly Hermitian operator. On the right part, you have non-Hermitian. Therefore, you have to be a little bit more smart about this. So instead of dealing with uh, Schrodinger equations, you have to switch to the density operator. It's also good because it allows the inclusion of mixed states, better connection to open quantum system, et cetera. To do that, you do a standard procedure. You formulate a joint equation. And then it, it reduces operator, which is product. And then multiplying and adding these two equations together, you arrive at this equation for, the, for your uh, operator omega. And then you generalize this omega to, uh, to any arbitrary density operator. All right, so what we have in this equation? We have obviously the standard von Neumann uh, commutator term, where H plus is, is the Hermitian part of your Hamiltonian. And then we have an additional anti-commutator term, which is um, uh, which is basically uh, it contains uh, information about your environment. And then uh, you see, uh, unlike this equation, everything is uh, self, uh, self uh, consistent here. Your omega is, is still uh, emission, and uh, all the structures uh, it has, a, it has a well defined mathematical structure. Well, why it's not the full story? Thing is that if you take a trace of both parts of this equation, it turns out that your trace is not conserved in time. 
and uh, so because its uh, derivative, it would be proportional to this trace of your anti-Hermitian part. Therefore, you have uh, some problems with probabilistic interpretations. So such that uh, trace goes to zero infinity, how would you interpret it? Also, you have certain problems how to define purity. And then uh, you have uh, some energy, you, you lost your energy gauge invariant. So all these three problems say somehow make you not happy, maybe for these reasons, uh, this uh, non-Hermitian systems were not uh, popular, they not become popular immediately, although they appeared as, as early as the 60s. Well, uh, apparently there is a solution to these problems. Uh, uh, what you have to do is you introduce a, a force normalization. You have to introduce uh, your uh, operator, which is uh, measurable, we call it measurable. And because all the aver averages are computed as traces with this new operator, and this is your omega old omega divided by its trace. And that way you eliminate problem number one, you can, uh, problem number two, because you can define period in a standard way. Uh, the only thing that's interesting that your uh, equation for omega turns out gives a rise to the equation for rho. And rho has a very similar structure to the old equation, plus uh, this new term, which is something new. It is uh, nonlinear because it contains uh, an average uh, for, of your anti-Hermitian part of your Hamiltonian over over, over your, over your uh, Hilbert space of your subsystem. And for example, if you have a, if, you, if it's a full uh, X space and it's an infinity, uh, it's an integration over the whole uh, configuration space. And uh, so it's nonlinear because it, it, it's uh, gamma contains also rho inside. And it's non-local because it's in general it contains all those in integrals over the configuration space. But it's, uh, you see, it's always manageable because you can always use this equation as a and that and go back and solve it and then go forward and uh, check what are the physical consequences. Okay, so this is actually was uh, something new, which somehow people haven't uh, really think about till before uh, 2012. And, uh, and since we have a lean blood approach, uh, the old good one, and we have also this new approach that is also tempting to create a, a hybrid approach when you have both terms, uh, both the lean blood term, which comes from basically from Markovian dynamics plus all those uh, all those uh, approximations I mentioned before, and this term, uh, these two terms, which actually come from uh, from top, top, they don't use any assumptions like. Marco and or anything like that because they introduced as the Hamilton. This is a little opportunity to go beyond the Marco. Maybe this is part as well. So I, <clears throat> we don't know actually that because I, as you probably know that, and from previous talks actually the criterion for non Markovianity uh, are quite uh, quite vast and sometimes they're not even clear how, which one is which to be applied. But uh, so we, in the meantime, we're actually quite happy to apply to various systems. And uh, let me represent you, uh, give you an example of some application. Uh, Two-level system, uh, such as uh, uh, two-level atoms sitting in environments. So we have a two-level open quantum system. Obviously, this is uh, one application is two more single atom laser, but it can TLC can be also robust approximation in case of uh, those two well uh, Hamiltonian or two well potentials or a uh, system where the distance between a bunch of levels is much larger than uh, the inter interlayer inter uh, inter level distances. Uh, and uh, let's introduce as an example, maybe pedagogical, let's introduce some Hermitian Hamiltonian. So let's start with the original Hamiltonian, which describes bare two level atom and a dipole interaction with electromagnetic field. So it's well-known textbook Hamiltonian. And uh, let's do a trick. Let's move uh, these parameters omega node and omega into the complex plane. Because, well, for starters, there are probably some physical values. Uh, and nobody told us from the beginning they should be uh, real valued, absolutely. 
So let's do a little assumption and and relax those uh, real value, uh, real valueness uh, requirements into the complex uh, domain. And then that way we actually obtain the anti-Fermitian part, which we can safely add to Hamiltonian. Uh, and in here we immediately see uh, the part which has a physical meaning of spontaneous emission, which is quite popular in this uh, uh, models which study decay of atoms and also dissipation of uh, uh, other constant alpha, which is imaginary part of omega would be dissipation of dipole wave interaction. So we have, uh, we have created quickly this, uh, simply this extension of our original Hamiltonian. And, uh, and then we, so total Hamiltonian would be our self-adjoint part plus this one, this part, which is described spontaneous emission and dissipation. And evolution equation would obviously contain this part and uh, dissipator can come standard way as if you remember in real world approach in, in, in quantum optics, dissipator has usually this from this plus this one. So all together, and remember we, we also need to switch to remember that our, uh, our observable, so to, so to say uh, density operator must be actually rho divided by trace rho of this one. Or alternatively, we have instead of these two equations, we have uh, this just one equation. All right, so with this uh, picture, we have a, we create a system, evolution equation, when you write down it as a differential equation, this is our uh, commutator part, anti-commutator part, these two terms is your Lindblad part, and other remaining three terms is also non hermitian part. So we play, uh, it's uh, from optics textbook, uh, result that plane to, to level laser is theoretically impossible because uh, we know that population inversion requires positive Const population Constantine, difference. You, if you can go towards the end because you have two minutes more. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm sure I'm almost done. So uh, uh, you know that the two mode laser is impossible for, uh, to describe two level system. But uh, interesting that uh, semiconductor lasers, uh, they actually they are approximately two level systems. So because they have instead of two levels, they have a uh, two bands. So the electrons are happily uh, jumping between all of them and producing a coherent radiation. So the question is how to, how to make, uh, how to make a model, which would be uh, relatively simple, uh, yet uh, uh, accurately describe this kind of approximately two level system. And then yes, you can turn out that Lindblad type of model would be would probably have problem with it because they, they always produce negative contribution into the population difference. And uh, but uh, non, if you add non Hermitian terms of your Hamiltonian, that actually your population difference can be made positive, and therefore you those models can be used uh, uh, to model those approximate to level lasers at a very low at very low computational cost. Okay, it's also, well, there's also not the additional effects which can be seen in the lasers, like such as absorption emission time and asymmetry. I'm gonna skip it and go to re the references. So the, basically the talk is based on this article of me and, uh, and Alessandro Sergi from University of Messina. We had some applications, we had some community. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for the talk. Are there questions here? Okay, online seems nobody's a question. Are there questions here? So I have a question myself. In, um, so in the, in the mixed formulation, can you engineer your uh, Limbladian and, um, and your non-Hermitian part of the Hamiltonian in such a way you ensure convergence towards a Gibbs measure, things like this. I mean, you, in such a way that you can study the equilibration to you, of your system towards a, a thermal state. Constantin? Is, is this the answer or? <laughs> no, I think the connection is lost. Hello? Oh, 
Constantine. What should we do? <laughs> hmm? Yeah. Yes, he left. <laughs> no, I think. Uh, let me check. Uh, he left. So it was a really hard question. <laughs> you, that's the advantage of uh, online conferences. <laughs> you know, you disappear and, and that's it. <laughs> I don't know if you will join it again. Well, if not, I think we can uh, go to, we can thank him again, even <laughs> at least morally. And then essentially we reach the end 